Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on Houston rapper BFG Strap, his violent death, and the graphic picture that's floating around the internet. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Somebody did it. Oh, my God. Oh my God, oh Lord Jesus. They blow his brains out. They blow, he a young boy, they blow his brains out, Thelma. He got a whole hole in his head and neck. September 22nd, 2022, the sounds of automatic gunfire would shake the 2800 block of Casey Street in South Houston. A woman would take the Facebook live reacting to what just took place and eventually walking outside of her own home to see a young man shot dead, laying halfway on the sidewalk and halfway in the street in front of her sister's house. The car next to the dead man was still running and a bright red pool of blood was in the middle of the street behind the car. As the woman remained on live, another woman can be heard saying a second man had been shot before being picked up and placed into a red car that drove off. The pool of blood in the street belonged to the second man who'd been shot in the face. Another man heard in the background of the live video would claim a group of men had met up to fight when they started shooting at each other. <laughs> Oh man, they done killed the wrong person too. Oh Lord Jesus. Somebody got killed. Bo! Bo! Bo, somebody got killed. I don't know. I don't know. This is some bullshit. This is a bullshit. Oh my God. Oh Lord, please. Oh God. The man who was left on the ground got it the worst as the shooters apparently unloaded into his face and neck. The woman recording can be heard saying they blew his brains out, blew his neck out, and she described the holes left from the gunfire. Soon, a picture would make its way to the internet, showing the brutality of what took place. 22-year-old Antoine Dillard, who went by the name BFG Strap, was a rising rapper from West Dallas with ties to the more popular Dallas rapper, Trap Boy Freddy. Strap would give numerous interviews where he detailed his upbringing and how from the very beginning he had it hard as his mother gave birth to him inside of a prison. She was serving a two year sentence and Strap's father had 24 hours to pick him up from the prison or he'd be handed over to foster care. His father would end up bringing him home wrapped in a coat. While Strap claimed the West Side, he moved to South Dallas as a kid and over the years would build strong ties to both neighborhoods. By 16 years old, Strap would be arrested for a firearm at the South by Southwest Music Festival and taken to a juvenile facility in Austin, Texas. Before being released, officers would visit Strap's cell, asking him if they let him out, would he retaliate, as they warned him retaliation would lead him right back into a cell. Confused, Strap didn't know what they were referring to, and on his way home after being released, his sister and mother would share the news his 17-year-old cousin had been shot in a double shooting the night before and died in the early morning, only hours before Strap was released. His cousin, who went by the name Sweeney, was killed with another teen named Lil J. Both teens were the founders of BFG and their deaths would solidify a war against the rival Stretch Gang. A rapper by the name of Number 7, who was also a member of Stretch Gang, would drop a song titled Number 7, in which he'd reference Sweeney and Lil J's violent deaths, leading many to believe Stretch Gang was responsible and proudly claiming it. While 16 would be the age Strap lost his cousin, it was the same year he started rapping, with his first two songs hitting over a million and a half views. But even with the newfound talent, violence was never far, and Strap would detail some of the close calls in an interview with Camp Capone as he shared the story of a car he was driving being shot up, and the only reason he wasn't shot in the head was because he was short. When asked how it feels to be shot at, Strap would reply saying, 
That shit's scary. It feel like you finna be reborn. Like you finna die. With ties to Trap Boy Freddy, Strap would have a publicized beef with a few Dallas rappers, one of which was Stretch Gang's number seven, who was signed to Mo3. As everyone knows, Mo3 was gunned down on the freeway, getting shot in the back of the head by a man whose photo went viral soon after. Trap Boy Freddy would take the Instagram moments after Mo3's death, mocking the traffic on the freeway and hinting at celebrating. Man, whoever got the motherfucking freeway blocked out need to get y'all shit together, dog. God damn. Nick ain't get on the fucking freeway. Man, Law got the freeway blocked off all the way on Pope, dog. The fuck they got going? Gonna pop some bottles, bitch. It's bottle popping time. Half party time. With the news that Strap was killed, Trap Boy Freddy would take the Instagram, sending his condolences to Strap's family. But meanwhile, Number 7 didn't forget how Trap Boy Freddy mocked Mo 3's death, and he decided to mock Strap's death the same way, starting with the post of Miley Cyrus singing Potty in the USA. Hey, somebody bring me a bowl. I got the bottles. I got bottles coming. Bring me a bowl, man. We smoking out the bowl today. I promise everybody getting litty. Pull up on me. Let's get it. Can't find me an Airbnb plug. We popping bottles all bit. Not tell me to chill back to while many were quick to assume the graphic picture of a dead man on the ground was strapped, a source close to the situation has denied those claims and given a backstory as to what took place that matches witness statements from the Facebook Live. 26-year-old Corey Lucian, who goes by the name Cut a 900, was said to have pulled up to Casey Street in South Dallas, an area strap frequented. He apparently pulled up wanting to fight, but it isn't confirmed that Strap was even the one he was trying to fight. Either way, fists went to flying before bullets made contact and Strap was shot in the face while cut his face and neck was dumped into, leaving a baseball sized hole in his jaw. Looking at the picture, you can literally see the grass on the ground through his face. Cutter was dead at the scene, his car still running, as Strap was placed in a red car and driven to the hospital where he later died. Cutter can also be seen wearing gloves in a picture, which he apparently wore to the fight. While Cutter wasn't a member of Stretch Gang, he was affiliated through a friendship with a Stretch Gang member and could be seen in a picture captioned, Everybody over here done slump some. It's clear Stretch Gang is celebrating Strap's death while members of Cutter's family showed up at the scene, distraught over his loss. At this time, no motive has been given, and no suspects are in custody. Now if the rumors are true, this is just another example that you can't ever expect a fair fight. I mean, this kid pulled up in technically his op's territory, right? Because if he's affiliated to Stretch Gang, he's guilty by association. That's how anyone else would look at it. You know what I mean? So he pulls up to where Strap be at, where people know Strap be at. A fight pops off. Strap gets shot in the face. Cutter gets shot in the face, jaw, chest, arm. I mean, if y'all go and look at the picture, it looks like he got hit with a fucking grenade. It's, I'm not even just gonna get into the details of it. Just go look at the shit if you want to. But I don't really see how there's room to celebrate on either side. You know, if y'all are that into it with Strap that y'all are just happy no matter who dies in the process of him getting killed, it shows the view is the reality of gangbanging. It's the same shit when a little kid gets hit in the drive-by. As long as they got who they wanted to get, they're gonna be happy about it. And anyone else that dies in the process is a casualty of war. But from the perspective of anybody who didn't like Strap, I mean, this shit just played out how it played out because Cutter apparently wasn't a member of anything. They just got into it and Strap died in the process. But we don't know how many people actually pulled up. I highly fucking doubt that Cutter was dumb enough to pull up by himself. And you know, obviously, Strap had people with him. They were able to put him into a car and drive him to the hospital. But like with anything else, we're just going to have to wait and see how this plays out. It's just, it's crazy to see the cycle of violence. 
the cycle of celebration when somebody dies. People really want to pop bottles and rent Airbnbs and get strippers over the fact that somebody was killed. That type of energy that you put out, it gets reciprocated. If you don't believe it, live long enough to experience it. And you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. But hey, it's Tan Natty Jake. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.